Hey guys, I'm Jesse Laval. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over photo stacking, what it is, why you would want to use it, and after I show you how to get those images, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Bridge and Adobe Photoshop to merge all of those images into one final photo stacked image. Now photo stacking, in essence, is a very, very simple thing. All we're going to do is take a bunch of different images and merge them into one image. The reason that we do this is because we're going to be able to achieve a much increased depth of field in comparison to taking it as one single frame. So what I would do is I would focus on the very front of my subject, that being the front of the raspberry here, and then I'm going to incrementally, just very, very small increments, creep the focus back and take another image. Now, to get tack sharp focus at what I want at F8, I'm going to probably take around 20 or so images to get from the very front of the subject all the way to the very back of all of these berries. Now, I'm gonna show you how that's done. What we would do is just control the manual focus. We're gonna go right to the very front of the subject and we're gonna take our first shot. Now, again, this is 1 200th of a second, F8. ISO 200. I'm using the TT685C Godox flash and the X1 Pro trigger to trigger that flash. So again, focus on the very, very front of the subject here, the very front, and we take our first shot. Then very small increment, we creep the focus back, take image two, creep it back a little further, image three, you get the idea. So with 20 images now being photo stacked together, I will be able to achieve a much larger depth of field, again at F8 as opposed to F16 or F20. So I'm going to have sharper results with a larger depth of field, and it creates a really, really, really cool look when you pull it off right. So what we're gonna do is take these raw photos, open them up into Adobe Bridge, we're gonna batch edit them into JPEG, so we'll get our kind of tweaks to color and exposure done. And then I'm gonna show you how to take those JPEG images, load them into Photoshop, and we're gonna stack those and then merge them so that they can become one final photo stacked image. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use Adobe Bridge and we're going to select each one of our photo stacked images. So we wanna find the first image that's gonna be at the front of our subject, and then we wanna find the last image that's gonna be at the back of our subject. So we're gonna go ahead and find that right in Adobe Bridge here. So we select this image here, and then we're gonna go down and we're gonna find the last image for the photo stack. So again, this one's gonna have the subject in sharp focus in the back of the subject. So we're gonna hold shift and we're gonna select each one of those images. So now we've got all of the images in our photo stack selected and we're going to right click and we're going to open in camera raw. So that's gonna open each one of our images in camera raw. Now, one thing you wanna make sure that you do is select all of them again in camera raw here. So we're gonna click one of the images, and then we're gonna hold the Command key, and we're going to hit A. So once we do Command A, we've now selected all of the images, and now when we do our edits, it's going to apply all of the edits to all of the images exactly the same, which is gonna be really important. So what I like to do is use a color correction profile that's made for my camera. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm going to go to the camera matching profiles, and I tend to like Faithful, it's not quite as vibrant as you see like say landscape is but I think it shows more detail for shots like this so let's see faithful standard I like faithful so we're gonna go with faithful so we're gonna apply the faithful camera matching profile to this and let's check out what auto does not much of a change, so I'm gonna stay with as shot as far as white balance. Now this is where you would wanna make any of your changes that are gonna be applied. Again, we're gonna batch apply this to all of these images. So let's say like we wanna pull our shadows up a little bit so we see more detail in the shadows there. Maybe we would pull the highlights back just a hint, but not much. And then we can add a little bit of vibrancy if we want to bring those colors up. Maybe just a hint of contrast and then I'm pretty happy with that there. So what I would do now is I would just go ahead 
and I would save all of these into JPEG format. So we're going to go up to the right, we're going to click this little icon up here, and that's going to allow us to make a folder to save all of these images. So we're going to go to select folder, and I save these on my external drive, so we'll go here, and I have my photo stack JPEG folder, so I'm going to make a new folder for this one. We'll call it berries1, and we're going to select that folder. So now that we've created the folder that we're going to save all of these in, I like to go down here and I make sure that I have this set to one digital serial number. In the beginning number, you want to set to one. Okay, and we're just going to do berries as the name of this. So it's going to be berries one, two, three, four. You get the idea. And what we're going to do is just save all of these. Now I save these as maximum quality at 12 as JPEGs. So we're going to save it. And then that's going to go ahead and batch out all of those edits that we made exactly the same way to each one of those images. And now we're going to have the JPEGs that are actually ready to be stacked and then merged in Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, we want to actually merge these into a bunch of different layers. So we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Scripts, and then we're going to go to Load Files into Stack. So now it's going to let us select all of those JPEGs that we created. So we're going to go to Browse. We're going to find that folder that we created. Berries. And we're going to select all of those images and hit Open. So now it's put all of those images in there. So we can go ahead and we want to make sure that we click Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images. So we're going to click that. And we're not going to click create smart object after loading layers. Do not click that. We just want attempt to automatically align source images clicked. And then we're going to hit OK. And now what we're going to see is it's going to take these. It's going to put these in as individual layers. And you're going to see that it's going to align these. So it's going to mess up the outer edge of our image. So that's something that you want to know. So you want to shoot just a little bit wider than what your ultimate image is going to be because you need to know that when we do this alignment, it messes up the outer exterior of our image. So we will probably have to crop in to correct that. So once that's finished, you see that what I'm talking about, the edges are all messed up, but we'll fix that later. But now we've merged all of these aligned layers together. So we're going to click on it and then we're going to go up to the top of it and we're going to hold shift and select all of those layers. So now that we have all of the layers selected, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to edit and we're going to go to auto blend layers. So once we go to auto blend the layers, we want to make sure that stack images is selected. We want to make sure that seamless tones and colors, content aware fill transparent areas is selected. And once we have all of those things selected, we're just going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to assess which part of the layer is the most sharp and it's going to blend that together so that our end result is going to look like a really nice tack sharp focus all the way through our entire subject. OK, so now that the computer's finished blending those, we're going to crop in just a little bit. So we're going to hit C and we're going to crop in around those edges just a little bit. So that way we work around that messed up edge that we expected when we were going into this, right? So we're going to get just those berries. And boom. And here we go. So now we've got our photo stacked image. And as you can see, we've achieved tack sharp focus from the back of the berries all the way up to the very front of the berries unlike we were able to do with a single frame shot, even shot at like say something F16. And now we've been able to shoot this at F8, retained ultimate sharpness. We had the best image quality we could because we were able to keep our ISO really low. We were able to achieve tack sharp focus all the way through the subject, which is what we were looking for. So guys, I hope this helped you a little bit. If it did, go below, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you on my next video.